So hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Secrets of the Viz. This week, we're continuing our conversation to explore parallels between video game design and data viz in terms of narrative structure and UX UI, and how we can apply some of these cross learnings to make data visualization a bit more fun. For our new video games audience who are tuning in this week, I'm Luis, a community leader in the Tableau space. I work in visual analytics at 2K Games where I create bespoke dashboards for our game titles. This is part two of a series of conversations that I had with Lucas, who is the CEO of a video game startup, Lawworks. And this week, we're going to talk about his favorite video games UX UI and what makes them good or bad. So over to you, Lucas. Yeah, so I'm Lucas Olivieri. I'm the CEO and the creative director at Loreworks. So what are the top video game UX UI that you absolutely adore? Yeah, so that's a tough one to answer because all of them have something that I would change and make better, but I do have some great ones. One of my favorites is Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. If you have an RPG, especially a first person RPG, any kind of interface you put on screen is breaking the fourth wall. Immersion is extremely important in these RPGs, right? Your character doesn't need to know his health bar. You know what I mean? That's all for you, for the player not for the character. So when you're designing interfaces for these games, there has to be a very important reason for you to put interface on the screen because immersion is so important. I like the game that much because it's a textbook example of good iteration. The interface and UX upgrades from KCD1 to KCD2, I thought were incredible. So this right here is the HUD the heads up display for kingdom come one and the issues here are you'll see this compass right here on the screen if you think about it this entire area is completely useless it's fine having borders and stuff to add stylization to your game but when 60 percent of the interface element that you added is useless borders that becomes an issue because everything else is tiny the borders are too thick and what's actually useful is small. If you go down to the health bar and the stamina bar, it's the same issue. 50% of this bar is just border. That adds nothing to my experience. It's not useful at all. The thin little lines inside, that's what's useful to me. And so what they did then with Kingdom Come 2 is they fixed it. So if you go up to the compass, that border is much thinner and it still looks medieval, which is important, obviously, because the game is medieval, right? The stylization is still there, but now I have so much more useful information that is not fighting with these useless borders. And it's the same thing with the health bar. They made it thicker, but not just thicker. The borders are now thinner. And what's the most important thing in a heads up display, your health is given the utmost importance in here. That is prioritization in interface done correctly. That needs to be t priority number one. And then you have your ammo counter and stuff. This is an issue for console players. I talk about this in my video. The ammo counter is too small for a console player. When I say console players and PC, the only difference is distance. Console players play from their couch. And then when you look at the first inventory for KCD1, it's the same issue. 50% of this screen is useless because it's all these little borders and columns and stuff that is adding medieval stylization to it. The actual useful inventory is 40% of the screen. Their evolution to KCD2 inventory, they fixed it. Now the actual inventory is given the importance and they still keep it medieval. Like the stylization is still here. It is just so incredibly beautiful. And I just love that they iterated so well from the first game to the second game in everything, but interface is again, my passion. This is, so this is really interesting because when I was starting out in data visualization, I made a lot of mistakes along the way. And I learned from my mistakes because I used to think that the more that you add to the dashboard in terms of borders or images and stuff like that would make the dashboard more appealing your users, but it has the adverse effect instead. It distracts people from what actually matters. Like what you pointed out, the health bar taking up 50% or less in terms of visual space and your users need to hunt for that 
information? Yeah, I call it prioritization. It's two things. It's prioritization and then compartmentalization in interface. It's something that you can use with data and dashboards. What is the most important thing that you want to say? And you have to treat it as if it's the most important thing. That means if it's the health bar, the health bar needs to be thicker. The health bar needs to be very visible. The health bar cannot be in the periphery of the screen because that is your peripheral vision. And so if you're playing a game on your screen, you're looking dead center. That's usually where the action is. So if you put stuff around the corners of the screen, it can't be that important because you won't be able to notice it that well. And it's the same thing with prioritization with data and stuff like that. If your most important data point is, I don't know, like return on investment or something, that needs to be front and center. Readability has to be incredible for that one thing. Because if you're showing 50 other things, you can't show the 49 other things with the same importance. And it's the same thing with UI and UX, right? And then compartmentalization is, as an example, usually you have your health bar, your stamina bar, and then like your mana bar. These are things that are in the same group. I cannot treat this the same way as I do an action bar with hotkeys and ability buttons. It has to be a different presentation in an interface because it's like in a different compartment. These are different categories of elements. And so they have to be visually different. That helps with UX because as a player, you associate things that are diamond shaped. Those are my abilities. You know, my health bars and stuff, they're actually rectangles. These other things are, are circles. And then you start associating the shapes to the certain feature in the game. But if I wanted to go to a different genre altogether, Marvel Rivals, I think they were extremely creative with their UI. One thing that I talk about in the videos too, and the reason why I love the Marvel Rivals UI so much is consistency. Consistency is something that a UI designer loves. When you find a screen that has a layout or shapes or something that you can then reuse and reuse, it just cuts so much of your work. It becomes so much easier to design these screens. But then what happens is if you do this for every screen, your UI becomes stale. It becomes super boring and uninspiring. With Marvel Rivals, they made different screens for just about everything. And then Marvel Rivals has that problem with dark mode and light mode. So some screens are dark. And then you transition to a light mode screen and it kind of hurts your eyes a little bit, right? And so that's where I didn't like what they did, but I just love the creativity. And obviously they have to pull back a little bit on the animations that they use. Usually I tell people that UI animations are, don't do them unless it's some incredible masterpiece, make them as fast as possible. If a player is going to use that part of the interface. Very often, the animation needs to be just a split second as fast as possible or no animation at all. If it's something that the player is only going to use once every level up or something like that, then you can go a little crazy on the animation stuff. You know, think about Bethesda games. Skyrim is a fantastic example of this. They have this insane skill tree which is one of the coolest interface where you pick your new perks for your skills when you level up. The UX in here is horrible because navigating the, the stars is so difficult. You want to click on a star, but then it takes you to the other perk tree. But because you only do this like once per level and it looks so incredible, you deal with it. It's all, it's Stockholm syndrome. It's a horrible experience, but it's so beautiful. The same thing in Fallout, you have the perk poster in Fallout 4. Beautiful, just incredibly horrible UX, but it's so cool. It's this animated poster with all of these Fallout boys and they're animating, right? And so you deal with it because it's only once per level. But if you had to open this thing all the time, I don't think you would like Fallout 4. It's interesting because recently I played Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and they have like the skill trees carved in stone. Navigating through the different knots was a headache. Sometimes you press left yeah. and it doesn't go to the left one. So the UX yeah. is horrendous, but the thematic design of it was perfect for what it was going for. And in the second rendition on the game, which is survival, uh, they 
had each of the different trees in a stone monolith. So you could navigate from one tree to another, but the same problem still stands, but it looks great. Yeah. But, but again, you're only dealing with that once per level. If it was an inventory screen, it would be a giant problem. And I think is where Bethesda really drops the ball. The vanilla Skyrim inventory system is horrendous. This whole side menu that opens another sub side menu in the list of things, that is just terrible UX. Thankfully for them, modders fixed it with a Sky UI. And now so many games are based on Sky UI. Uh, Fallout, it is a genius idea to put an inventory inside a Pip-Boy. But could they at least zoom in so that it takes up the entire screen? I have this 28-inch monitor, but you're forcing me to use a 12-inch monitor because that's the usable part of the Pip-Boy. It's almost like using an Apple Watch. They also have scan lines, and they also make the thing flash on and off because apparently everything in the future needs to have scan lines and stuff. It's something I never understood with sci-fi. Seriously, it's like today's tech is better than the sci-fi tech. Like holograms in Star Wars picture is horrible. Haven't we figured this out yet? But that is a whole other conversation there. But the reason why I talk about Bethesda, Bethesda has some great UI ideas. So if you look at, this is what I call Bethesda quick loot, right? So in Fallout 4, they introduced this interface feature, which is looting without stopping the game. It allows you to hover over a container or a body of the enemy that you just killed and then loot stuff without pausing the game and do it really quickly. And then you continue playing your game. So many developers are now copying this and putting that in their RPGs. And so I applaud Bethesda for taking these risks and taking us forward, at least the RPG interface space. This is one that I didn't talk about in one of our videos. It's Indiana Jones. And the reason why I didn't do a video on this one was I couldn't find anything to change. It's a good problem. It's, it is for the developers. It is not for me. I want to make a video. <laughs> or something. I need to change something. No, this is, I think, just perfection. This UI is just so elegant, so clean. It adds to the experience. And one thing that they do that is awesome is they use the 3D of the objects in the game to interact with the UI. So your map in Indiana Jones is inside this journal that you have. That's the UI and it's dynamic, it changes, but it's in the journal. It's really awesome, right? When you open a journal screen, you get these overlays that are part of the interface that you would associate with the interface. But the star of the show is the actual 3D object. It's incredibly well done. Some people like skeuomorphism. I don't. I am the stereotypical modern UI guy. The gaming industry is now all about being minimalist because way back when in the 90s, the interface was a way to convey the world of the game that you were playing. So a stylized interface helped do that because the graphics suck. That's skeuomorphism. Today, we don't have that problem anymore. And the graphics have gotten so good that the interface is no longer part of the show. The interface needs to let the game world shine. Um, this is Baldur's Gate 3. I love Larian, it's my favorite company. Their UX is pretty good. However, don't know how to do inventory management. I am a person that absolutely hates inventory management in my games. I download the infinite capacity mods as soon as they're out. And if you look at this screen, this is a tab screen on the PC. You get all of the inventories from your party. Plus you have a stash at your camp. So that's five different inventories that you manage. I think that the best inventory system is a list. So lists are the best UX because they show you the exact name of the thing that you're looking for and the quantity and all the information that you need. Super easy to sort as well. Sort by name, by rarity, all of these things. I think this is also a fundamental problem with iconography. Not everyone remembers or understands the same icons. So I think inventory management probably came from like your Diablo days where you had so many sh shit that you can pick up from the floor. And th back then it was even worse because you had like shields thinking up like two by three and then you have yeah. potions taking up one slot. I call that the Tetris <laughs> inventory. Exactly. Picking up stuff was hard enough and then trying to fit everything in your 
back, it was another challenge by itself. Yeah. That is the inventory system that I hate the most. It's the Petrus inventory, which they use in Stalker 2 uses it. Path of Exile uses it as well. So Larian, if you're ever listening to this podcast, how would I fix your inventory system here? First of all, use a list. You already have unlimited inventory space in Baldur's Gate 3. All you need to do is just go back to your camp. Stash, it's unlimited. My experience is just bad because I need to go back to camp. So change this to a list. Give your party a pack animal that you could upgrade to a point where it's almost unlimited. And then you have a unified inventory screen, okay? Your characters can only have their tiny inventories that you can then automate. Things like potions and stuff like that. Run an automation script or I can set little rules. I don't know if you play Dragon Age Origins, but kind of like that tactic screen. If then, that's one of the greatest things I've ever seen in like CRPGs and people don't do that stuff anymore, which I, I never understood that. Look, they evolved from Divinity Original Sin 2 to Baldur's Gate 3. It was already a good jump. It was much worse before. Ultimately, it's all about iterations. Like KCG, like they did so much changes from the first one to get to the second one. And I think as people get better at UI and UX design, you think more about it in the shoes of your users, I think that yeah. is when it gets better. I could finish just with one quick thing. You said readability. What I tell people is always test white text on a white background. If you want to use white text, the white background is going to ensure that your text is readable everywhere else. You just need to use the shading that we talked about for like subtitles and stuff like that. If you can read it, you can read it everywhere else. And if you use any other color for text, people are already looking at it like differently. So to recap, what I'm getting from this is two main concepts. Prioritization to ensure that your most important metrics are front and center and not to your peripheral vision. The next is compartmentalization for things that are similar in functions, tapping into that whole guest stop principles as well. So thank you again, Lucas, for sharing your amazing knowledge on video game UX UI and showing us how we could potentially implement some of these principles to data visualization. Thanks everyone for tuning in and check out next week's episode where we wrap up things with Lucas showing us behind the scenes of the amazing data visualization he did for my game of the year, Clay Up Skill. Thank you very much. <laughs>